Ram 1500 has been a bit of a success story for the brand in Australia, and until now, it's only been available with petrol power. But that's all changed with this model. It's the Ram 1500 Eco Diesel, which gets a V6 turbo diesel engine, which should be well suited to what we're gonna put it up to today. We've managed to get our hands on a decent sized caravan thanks to our mates at Jayco Nowra. And we're going to hit the road to see how this new diesel powered Ram 1500 goes with this much weight behind it. The caravan in question is a Jayco Journey and here are some of the vitals that you need to know about it. Yes, it's about the size of van most people are going to be towing, but this truck should be up to the task. The Ram 1500 Eco Diesel doesn't set any new standards for brake towing capacity. It has a 3.5 tonne limit, which is the same as some of the regular sized dual cabs, like the Ford Ranger and Isuzu D-Max. If you need more towing capacity, consider the V8 Petrol 1500 model with the lower axle ratio, which has a 4.5 tonne capacity, or a Ram 2500 or Chevrolet Silverado. All Ram models have a tow bar included, with an integrated electronic brake controller fitted as well. Now we mentioned the brake towing rating is 3.5 tonnes, and the total maximum weight permissible for the vehicle and the van, that's the gross combination mass or GCM, is 6,692 kilograms. Here are the other figures you need to know. The 3 litre turbo diesel V6 engine in the Ram 1500 doesn't necessarily look like it's got huge outputs. Well, on paper at least, I mean, it's got less than a Volkswagen Amarok V6 or a Mercedes-Benz X-Class V6 when it comes to outputs on paper. But in practice, the engine is really good. It's nice and refined, it has plenty of pulling power, and the eight-speed automatic transmission does a really good job of harnessing the power when you've got a load behind. Now, three and a half ton towing capacity isn't amazing, especially for a ute this big. You would have expected maybe four and a half tons, and you can get that if you buy the petrol version with that specific rear diff ratio. There's also a three and a half ton spec petrol V8, or you can get that four and a half. And if you really need to be able to tow four and a half tons, then you basically can't get a diesel in this size of ute from Ram that will do it. So I guess for me, it's kind of a weird psychological thing. I think that a ute of this size should be able to tow more than a Ford Ranger, for example, or a Nissan Navara, but it can't. And that could be a real reason for you to consider whether the diesel is right for you if you're buying a Ram 1500. I mean, the petrol version could cost you less money and tow more. So you'll need to weigh that up when you're making your decision. But as for the diesel, let's talk about it because we're driving it and we've got to review it. It's a really good engine, really good transmission, and the way that it rides is also quite good. It's got quite a long wheelbase, this ute, but you will notice that it does have a bit of fore and aft pitching. So you can feel the weight of the caravan pulling it down at the back and pushing the nose up a little bit over country roads like we're on now. It isn't to the point where you feel like you've lost confidence in what you're doing. It doesn't get to that point, which is good because some other dual cab utes in that slightly smaller section of the market do feel a little bit more nervous. That's not the case with this ute. It feels comfortable, confident, planted, and confidence inspiring, which you can't say for some of the other utes in the size section below. Depending on the road surface, the ride can be a little bit jittery. On country back roads, for example, you might notice that there is just a bit of roughness to the ride, and that isn't helped by the fact that the Ram has 20 inch wheels on it as well. So you do need to factor that in. If you're gonna encounter a lot of rough country roads, then maybe it might not be the perfect car for you, but if you do a lot of highway kilometers, which we've also done in our time in the Ram 1500 diesel, then you will find that it's really nicely settled and very comfortable in most situations. The steering is decently accurate and surprisingly as well, it's actually got a smaller turning circle 
than a Ford Ranger, for instance. So it does feel a little bit smaller than the size suggests it should. And you do feel that it shrinks around you a little bit, which is really good as a driver because you feel confident. And especially when you've got a big caravan or trailer or whatever you might have behind you, to feel confident behind the steering wheel is a very important factor when you're towing. One of the neater elements of the 1500 is that it's got an integrated electric brake controller. And that means that you can simply use a nice little toggle system down on the console to adjust your electric brake resistance on the trailer. And that's super handy, especially if you find yourself thinking, well, I can't adjust the knob because I'm driving along and I need to just concentrate. It comes up in front of you in the driver information screen and it's really simple to use. We've also set the car in towing or hauling mode and that essentially fiddles with the stability control system, the transmission and also turns off the rear parking sensors. Factoring in the cost and the fact that this is a big American truck, you might need to consider the general level of refinement in this sort of vehicle. And it is pretty quiet on the open road. There's not too much wind noise to contend with. The mirrors are large and you can hear a bit of rustle at 100 k's an hour, but it's not deafening in here. And in fact, it's quite comfortable and a really enjoyable place to be if you are gonna be covering lots of kilometers. But there are a few little things that maybe could be better. There are some plastics that could feel nicer and maybe fit together a little better and that's part of the result of the fact that this car came to Australia as a left-hand drive and then the steering wheel made its way to the right. Some of the plastic, some of the fit and finish could be better but it's not terrible. You might think that a diesel V6 should be more efficient than a petrol V8 and in the case of the Ram 1500 well, that's not the case because this version has a claimed official combined cycle fuel consumption of 11.9 litres per 100 k's, which is actually two litres more per 100 than the equivalent spec in the V8 petrol. But what can you expect if you're towing something like this or if you're just touring and not towing? Well, we did both and here's what you need to know. We measured our fuel consumption while towing and without anything behind the ram as well. We did the same loop so we had a control figure. Take a second to see the differences, but keep in mind your mileage may vary. We drove this vehicle to keep up with the speed limit and also stopped and started a bit for video and photo purposes. And you might see a little bit better than we did. You might be wondering about the equipment that you get in the Ram 1500 diesel. Well, it's the Laramie trim level, which means you get plenty of good stuff. But crucially, you miss out on some of the active safety features which you might want for yourself and your family. Read the full detailed review at the Cars Guide site for a rundown on what you get and what you miss out on. If you're after a comfortable and competent towing vehicle, then the Ram 1500 Eco Diesel could be a solid choice for you. I'm not personally sure whether it's $50,000 better at towing than a Ford Ranger, for instance, but if you need a ute of this size, then it's definitely one worth considering. Tell us what you think in the comments section below. Would you choose a 1500 Diesel or would you choose something completely different? Let us know.